Welcome to Alternating. We're discovering good movies, one bad movie at a time. I'm film school dropout Rob Jarsinski. Across from me is our casual movie goer, Carrie Jarsinski. It's not Sundance, but we're still doing interviews. We got, we got lucky, Care. We got lucky. We got to sit down, or we're going to be sitting down, excuse me, with Steve Zahn, Sasha Knight, Jillian Bell, and Anna Kerrigan from Anna's feature debut, Cowboys. Cowboys. Yeah, we just caught this recently. Yep. I kind of, you know, we were wrapping up Sundance watching, what, 16, 17 movies, and we're like, oh gosh, we have to throw on another movie. Woe, I didn't even really know what it was about, but then all I did know is you told me Steve Zahn. Yep. And you know what I said to you? What did you say? Fainting goat. I don't know what that means. I told you this already. My first memory of Steve Zahn is that he has a fainting goat farm. Yeah, but you also told the neighbor recently that Steve Zahn's in Super Troopers or something like that. <laughs> that so, which was inaccurate. I, I think with the facts, facts need to be checked. But the one fact that doesn't need to be checked is Cowboys is a quality quality film. We had we were immediately swept up in in the story of of Cowboys. It's a troubled but well intentioned father recently separated, uh, played by Steve Zahn, separated from his wife Jillian Bell, run off with their uh, their trans son played by uh, introducing Sasha Knight as Joe. Yep. Um, and they go off on like into the wilderness. Into They're an to, adventure. Yeah. It's a, this isn't doing it justice. Let me tell you a little bit more about it. So it's a little bit of a drama where at the start of the movie, Joe is still Josie, I think. Right. Yes, yeah. And long hair dresses, hates it, wants out, just does not know how to communicate yet to his parents about this. But quickly decides that, uh, you know, is ready to talk to his parents about it. When he does, parents have a diversion of feelings on it where dad, accepting right away. Let's just call it cool dad Rob approach. And I don't want to call it that. (laughs) I would be the cool dad in this scenario. Gosh. But uh, mom is a little bit slower to accept. And so it's the story of Joe says, take me with you. When dad takes Joe with him, dad gets in trouble because that's also called kidnapping. Yeah. And then the dad is, again, it's right here in the not It's well intentioned. He has his own sets of challenges. He's dealing with some own health, health so things himself. Yeah. I, I love that. I love that no, nobody's perfect in this and that the perfect, the person you think is imperfect also maybe, you know, like there, there's arcs, there's arcs for all of these characters. Um, the fact that it's there's true representation here that it's it's shot in beautiful Montana. I love like I love movies. It's that a little take western. Place. It's yeah. So it's a western. I love movies that take place in nature. Like you've yeah. you've already got me bought in. If you're going to take place in Montana or North Dakota, South like and this movie does it in uh, Anna Kerrigan. Um, she she really brings it to life with with this with the story. So I'm excited. I'm a little nervous to to have these conversations. Um, we're paired up with Sasha and Steve, which I think is a good pairing. They yep. have a great they have great chemistry. And then Jillian and Anna. And I'm just like the reason I'm nervous about this is I just don't want to say the wrong thing. You know what I mean? Like I'm I want, I'm I'm overly sensitive. I'm I'm sensitive to the to to these to these topics so i don't want to i don't want to do any missteps i understand that yeah Yeah, and i know i think it's fair to say we called our friends and our friends have a daughter who's trans and we were really transparent and said help us yeah we want to make sure that we are representing everything in the best possible way that we can and i want to ask you questions and i want to understand and they're so open and lovely and they really did walk us through some things that really helped us make sure that we were you know saying the right things and that's really important what, to us what made me feel better about that conversation is that we're not alone in our questions and our seeking the this the seeking of of the truth or seeking of the right you know proper ways and everybody's just figuring it out like even you know like so that's that's i I, i'm less nervous now about it Uh, i'm gonna be my authentic self on the i am too on the on the chat i am too and i think just to call back one other thing that i think is so so important is Is the fainting goats uh, after the (laughs) fact i was just gonna go to a serious topic and you brought up fainting goats i think how important representation is and how important it is to talk about things and to make people feel included inclusion and feeling like everything about you is okay. The way you are is so, so vital and important. And doing that through cinema is a really important way to do it. Well, the after effects by not doing so are are tragic. I know. 
the statistics are horrifying. I don't even really want you to Google it, but suicide rates for kids that are transgender are incredibly high, over 50%, something or that will attempt suicide. That's awful. Yeah. Something that as a parent and just as a general human is one of the more horrifying things that I've ever read or seen. So that can't be that way. It that, really that, that can. could be remedied with acceptance. Right. If something is, 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 is you would think is, is simple, like as, as, as human, as a, as a thing, Empathy. as it is like yeah. just to be compassionate you, just or to be just, you. yeah. Like, so for us, this movie was really an important movie for others. This will be important as well. And I love the story that it's telling because frankly, this is a little bit of a spoiler, but Sasha's the only one that has his shit together in this movie. <laughs> if we're being honest. Well, so if you ask our kids, that's, that's the way our household runs too. <laughs> that's true. So please enjoy this interview with Steve Zahn and Sasha Knight, followed by Jillian Bell and Anna Kerrigan. Hey, Sasha, Steve, how's it going? Robin, man. Robin Carey from Alternate Ending. I'm perfect. How are you guys you doing? Man. There's me. I'm back there. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere. Good. Somewhere in the woods. You two are back there. Let I me know, see if yeah, I need yeah. to make room for, for Sasha He's too. Copied off me. I thought we would have different ones. <laughs> You're here. There you are. There you are. People don't know that. <laughs> I was just taking a peek. That's right. Well, congratulations right. to both of you on the release of, of Cowboys. Not only that, snagging some some awards for your performances. And Sasha, congratulations on your first feature. I feel like you hit hit the jackpot right <laughs> out of the gate, you know, starring alongside Steve here. You got Jillian. You have the talented director, uh, Anna. What was the what was the casting process like? How did you get involved with the project? Um, so I wasn't really doing on camera stuff that much. But I was sort of coming out as trans, and so my mom let me audition for it because the character was trans, and we just, I was doing a bunch of voiceover, and then we just did it in my bedroom, and then I got a call back, and we got some good feedback, and then I got another call back with Anna, and then it was about a couple of months, and then I found out I booked it. Oh my gosh. You just yes. made that sound a lot easier than it probably is, but that's amazing. <laughs> We're so proud of you. That's awesome. I got to tell you, we have a kiddo that's exactly your age, and we struggle to get her to read 20 minutes every night. She's supposed to, but we struggle to get her to do that. How in the world did you juggle this and school and everything you probably have on your plate? <laughs> Um, well, I booked it during the summer, so it was summer right before I would have gone back to school. So we just homeschooled me because I can't be out of school for 30 days and it's longer than 30 days. So I kind of just, it was in the summer. And then when we went and actually shot it, it was like not. And then I just memorized it like half of it when, before we left and then the other half in Montana. I don't yeah. say shot in Mont. Oh, oh, yeah, that's where this beautiful scenery takes place. Steve, is that what what drew you to this project? Is it was it the setting, getting to ride with horses, being paired up with Sasha? What what was it for you that that drew you to the project? Um, look, I mean, I would I I always say like to my agents like if there's a western, even if it's crap, I'll do it. <laughs> Actually, mean that, and I just love that. You know, I I live on a farm. Um, I don't, you know, I'm an outdoorsy guy, but that had nothing to do with it. I mean, the, the script, when I read it, I was floored and so moved by it. And I rarely get this kind of attachment to a character. And it was, I, it's hard to explain. I mean, I mean, you know, it's thrilling to get an offer sometimes. And this was not an offer. This was like we had to have a conversation after I read it. Well, after I read it, I was like, I have to do this movie. And there's very few like that, that I've been a part of. It's like, no, this is, I have to be in this. You have, where you go, uh, you have to hire me. <laughs> you won't, you, uh, uh, I don't know why, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll do a good job. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, better than the other guy. I don't know. And you and, definitely did. It, this was a well, more dramatic it. role for you, I think, than I've seen <clears> in the past. And I was so impressed with what you were able to to bring from, 
you know, a, a dramatic standpoint. Was that difficult all, difficult at all to sort of get into that mode or did it just sort of no, come naturally? Not, I mean, I mean, look, I mean, you know, you do a comedy and then all of a sudden you're a funny guy, you know, and, you, and you're an actor, you know, I just, I'm an actor. And, um, and, and then as you, you know, grow older and, and, and age, you have more opportunities, those, those change. So, um, and, and I, I don't know, I always find the humor in characters. I always try to find the lightness or the, the things that you, you're in, you know, I'm, I laugh at the guy who's screaming at the, the, at the teller at the grocery store. That's funny. You know what I mean? It, why? I don't know. <laughs> like, why are you so upset? You know, and if you can recreate, I don't know. Maybe we can get deep into it. But, um, but yeah, no, it was, a, it was a real challenge for sure, just because he has so much going on. But, you know, I'm a dad and, and you know, and, and having kids, if it doesn't influence you, then you, there's something definitely wrong with you. And, and, and uh, it, it really moved me. Well, that's good. And like you said, exactly that. I know there's a lot of serious things going on in this movie with, you know, kidnapping and all those things that are going on. But you do infuse humor. And Sasha, the dynamic between you and your dad in this movie is really, really wonderful. It's fantastic. And there's just such a closeness there. Did you get some time that you guys got to get to know each other before it started to develop some of that closeness? Um, yes. So we both went up there two weeks early <laughs> and we did like horseback riding practice and just hung out and just also we like talked on the phone before we went um, to Montana. And yeah. then when we weren't on set, we were hanging out. <laughs> yeah. It was fun. And I bet Steve, you're Mr. Ser- Mr. Serious, right? Like Steve's probably no fun to, to hang out with, I imagine. Right, Sasha? <laughs> Well, I'm serious about pool. So I got Sasha into a bar at eight o'clock at night. And, and I swear to God, and we didn't get kicked out because it's Montana. And I think it's just a, a really good tradition that you can bring children to bars. Yeah. I imagine like it's a little bit of a different scene than, than LA. Um, and so no, it was, we, we, it was, we did so much together and we ate dinner and lunch and breakfast and, and we all stayed on the same floor. And it was really, you know, it's not all movies are like that, where everybody's kind of hanging out and having a good time. So, Well, that's great. You can really feel it. I think the whole fi- family dynamic definitely feels really, really genuine. So I, I think one of the, the moments in particular, Sasha, that I really, really loved was the scene where the two of you were having the conversation in the truck, where you decide <laughs> to tell your dad. And what I loved and I thought was most powerful about that scene was that you didn't give up. You know, you, you were trying to tell him and he didn't get it. And then you're like, let me just try this again. I'm going to tell you again, a little differently. And you waited until he did. And I think, you know, for me, and I think for everybody that's going to see this movie, I think that that was such a a powerful moment and that it's going to matter so much for, for so many other kids. So I just wanted to let you know that I think that that was probably the best scene of the, of the whole movie. And and you should know this. I'm sorry, Sasha, but, but, and this is, you know, first movie, but such a pro because that important scene, we had a half hour to shoot. Because it's low budget. Sasha's gone in a half hour. We have to shoot it. And Sasha and I got in the truck and we like fist bumped and went like, we got to nail it. You, we got to do it. You know, it like, no more screwing around. And we did. And, but that's, that's incredible. You know? Yeah. Way to go. There's so many vulnerable moments on that scene in particular. Then there's, there's some additional ones when, when the two of you are off, uh, what did you what did you learn most sasha from from getting to work with such a seasoned pro like steve that did did you pick up any any tricks um yes well i just learned so much from steve just by watching and, and then also uh steve taught me coverage and so much more and just it's awesome there's a little technical things that you just have to learn on the fly kind yeah. of thing well, Steve, I understand that you also um, run a, a community theater 
in your neck of the woods. If, if is that right? I know Sasha that you have a background in theater. Are we going to be able to see a reunion once the pandemic is over? I mean, Kentucky is only a six hour drive from us here in Madison. Like <laughs> I, I would drive out to see a, a reunion with, with the two of you. Oh, right on. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, we're my family and I were looking for a cabin in, in uh, up there in either Wisconsin, a little further West, but uh, yeah. Like mm-hmm. Bone Lake, Luck, Wisconsin, you know, over there. Well, don't come this time of year. Like I said, it's uh, it's two right oh, now, no, but... Trust me, I, I moved. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, just because a bunch of Swedes got off a wagon in, like, 1840s. I mean, <laughs> Jeez, this is miserable. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Well, we loved the film so much. We can't wait to share it with everybody. And again, we are just really proud of the representation uh, that this film provides. And we know it's going to be so important to (coughs) share Joe's story with so many others. So thank you. And we appreciate it. And and good luck with the rest of uh, promoting the movie. Thank you. Appreciate you. Take care, y'all. Hey, you two. How's it going? Hey. You're, you're reaching the end. I've heard that there's like maybe 30 minutes left <laughs> of this marathon. Yeah. See, I worked in marathon there. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yes. We're, we're towards the end of our illustrious Zoom press day. <laughs> well, congrats. Congrats on, on Cowboys, you two. Uh, and Anna, congrats on your first feature. I know you've made some amazing shorts in the past and- I would think that as a director, having made shorts, like when I'm going for my first feature and I'm digging in my bag of scripts because all I know that you all keep your scripts in bags, uh, you'd, you'd pick something small, intimate, maybe single location, maybe target, you know, like, uh, you know, a, one, one larger star to, to be part of it. But no, you went, you went all out <laughs> with your first, <laughs> with your debut feature. Why was, well, it, why was this the story that you wanted to, to focus on? Well, I'm a compulsive truth teller, so I have to tell you one little secret first, which is that I actually made a feature years ago for like no money. And it was essentially my film school. And I did exactly that. I did a lo- one location, four actors, whatever. Um, but it doesn't count because it was never distributed. Ah. So this is the beauty of the undistributed feature. Um, but anyways, for this film, you know, it's, I wish that I had when I wrote, I have, I have other scripts that I've written that were much smaller that I thought would be the one that got made. And a lot of times it's just about like sending it out and seeing who responds. And um, this was the movie that I assumed I would have to wait a while to make. And I, I did wait a while from the time I started writing it, but it was, you know, something that, uh, you know, the financier produced, the financing producer really responded to and trusted me with sort of based on my web series and my shorts that I had had at Sundance and, and just sort of like in the world. Um, and the, the film is really, you know, it's in some ways it, it isn't an obvious personal film, but I wrote it specifically for this part of Montana where I used to spend a lot of time as a kid. Um, and we were actually able to shoot there in the Flathead Valley. And I wrote it during a time when I was going through a transition myself and I just wanted to be back in Montana. And I just started the script with this father and son on horseback. And it, I just sort of like let it evolve. And I, you know, I realized they were outlaws. I knew they were running from something. And gradually I learned that, you know, the character Troy that Steve Zahn eventually, you know, that I had the privilege of working with him and watching him bring to life. Um, that character is a, you know, a dad with mental health issues. And then, his other outlaw buddy is his young transgender son. So it just sort of, you know, evolved. And I brought some of my like family, my own family dynamics into the movie as well. Um, but yeah, that was a long way of just saying someone let me do it. <laughs> well, I think, I think it goes to show that that's why you should never just have assumptions about your own work. Like get it out there. Like you never know which, which one's going to be the, the one and you gotta, you gotta send it out. So that's, that's a great lesson for, for folks. Yeah, right. that's true. Yeah. I think uh, it, like you said, it probably because you drew on these personal notes, it does feel like such a personal movie. You know, I think we as parents uh, really connected with the story and connected with Jillian, uh, with your character, you know, 
the roller coaster of emotions that one might experience. And then similarly, you know, for his dad, where it's like, you know, the his own experience, too, because you as parents we're dealing with our own stuff too. You're dealing with your own highs and lows and work. And I loved in particular, Jillian, where you talk about like, I'm the one that has to clean the toilets around here. Like, of course it doesn't look glamorous. Like we, we talked about that and it felt so real. I think for you, Jillian, why did this role in particular speak to you and and to your character to join on? I, I fell in love with the, with the script and, um, we, we share an agent, Anna and I, and, uh, I, I got a chance to get my eyes on it and I, I fell in love with it. I thought it was such a beautiful message and it wasn't, you know, done in a cheesy manner and over like, overly like, here's how you have to feel by the end of this film. I, I feel like a lot of films that kind of broached the family dynamics genre, it, it can have that feeling. And this never felt like that to me. This felt like humans that are complex and complicated, uh, that make mistakes and, and how do you move forward and how do you get back something that you have that you lost because you weren't seeing things clearly. So for me, it was just always about who is this mother? How did she get to where she is? And how does she get to where she ends up? Like, it's such a big, beautiful arc throughout the story that I didn't want her to just come off to some people as a villain because she didn't see and accept her kid right away. And 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 I thought it was great that um, Anna's script, her beautiful writing was was such that it was already on the page and now I was, you know, nervously as this actor preparing to this role and and hoping to not um, screw it up because I saw it so clearly in my head, but um, I had her guidance. So that was very helpful. Well, Jelly, I'll be honest. I wasn't sure if I was ready to speak to you after, after this movie started. Empathy. You gotta have some empathy, man. I know. I know it was hard. (laughs) It took a while. It took some time for me to get there, to be honest. Um, (laughs) <laughs> but I, I know that Steve had the luxury of being able to go off on uh, on a camping trip with Sasha and like form this bond. Now, was it the reverse for you? Were you making Sasha do homework or things like that to like create your your <laughs> dynamic? Or did what what? How did you how did you how did you two pair up? No, not at all. I felt like I was just trying to instantly win him over to show that I'm not this character. But he like he knew that from the get go. Like we immediately like. I, I pulled up a chair at his family dinner when I first arrived at the hotel because they were out sitting in the lobby. And I just, I fell in love with him. And I, you know, just tried to express to him that like, we're about to get into this thing that's that's really beautiful and messy and has a great message. But like, just know you can always come and talk to me if if you're feeling like anything feels off or weird because a lot of this, you know, although... Sasha does not come from the the experience of having an unsupportive family. He does come from trans experience. So it just, it was always so um, in the forefront to me to like, and it's his first film. Like it's what a a big uh, endeavor and he loved it. So it was wonderful to witness. That's what we said to him when we talked to him. We said, this is your first film and you're coming in with, these amazing co-stars and he well he got it he was like yeah I know (laughs) like I know this is an amazing experience so we really enjoyed talking to him as well but I think um you you both have pointed out something that I think is important and interesting about the film is that while we as the viewer would have loved to have maybe less drama for Joe we're like oh maybe it would have been nice if it was all you know easy and simple I think you know, Anna, I think you bring sort of something that's important in the fact that you create a different or a realistic story of what a kid in Joe's same situation might experience. Um, you know, how important was it for you to make sure that uh, the story and the message was realistic for other kids or people who might see this? Yeah, I did. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm cisgender. I, I, you know, so I was very aware of that going in. Um, and I wanted to be sure that I got it right. Um, though there is, I mean, there's so many different trans experiences, you know, there's, it's, I wanted to at least make sure it seemed in the realm <laughs> of, of authentic. 
And uh, yeah, so I, I mean, pretty early on, I shared the script with Nick Adams, who's the transgender media relations person at GLAAD. And he, you know, really loved the story and was super helpful. And he runs a group for trans families. And so he introduced me to a, a trans father, sorry, no, a, a father and transgender son. And I got to sit with them and talk with them about the script. Um, and the Montana Film Office was also really, really awesome and supportive. They, they gave the film a grant and uh, they flew us up to Montana for a location scout. And on the first night of our scout there, they set up this dinner with me and one of the producers um, with four transgender adults, all of whom had grown up in Montana and come out in Montana most of them deep into adulthood. And, you know, it's, it's very different to be trans in Montana than it is in LA or New York. And I mean, obviously varying experiences in all those places, but it was really amazing to talk to them. And one of the people I met that night is uh, a woman who's, uh, you know, a, a therapist for trans youth in Montana. So I stayed in touch with her as well. And then of course, you know, once, once we got into casting, I was talking to trans kids and their families about their experiences and seeing those script resonated with them. And of course, when Sasha came on board, you know, we went through the script and, and made sure that it was, it was believable for him, you know, cause he was, which, which I do with all my leads actors anyways, but you know, I just wanted to be sure that, that he he felt like it was authentic. Yeah, well, it definitely, definitely was. And again, you know, the trans representation in cinema, you know, isn't always positive. For this, it was, and it was wonderful, and it was really beautiful to see Sasha's story and see his family evolve along with him. So we would just want to thank you both so much for being a part of it and bringing it to life. And we're excited for everybody else to see it and enjoy it as much as we did. Great. Thank you so much, Thank guys. You. Take Thank care. you. Have a great one. You, you too. too. Bye. 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 Another interview done or two sets, two interviews done. I know. Two sets of interviews. Feel like it went well, really well. Um, it went fast. It did go fast. We ten, didn't have a lot of time. We got you got ten minutes, and this is this is more junket style. This is was this your first junket style care? I where think you got the so. breakout rooms. I think yes, it was. Okay, yeah, it's a it's, little more pressure with that. A little bit more pressure. You get kind of moved into a separate room, like a main staging area, where they're checking your you know audio levels. They make sure you're actually the right person who's supposed to be here, <laughs> and then. They send you to a breakout room. And I, I had that experience recently with Small Axe. I haven't had it since, but I think it's a very efficient way to manage the process. But I think then you get to the point where it's like, well, this this movie's so big and there's so much going on in it. And then to know that really at the end of the day, you've got a couple questions. You've got two or three. And on top of it, if there's two people in each interview, you want to make sure that there's a balance between the both. I think it's harder for for you and I in particular because this isn't, we're not professional interviewers, you know, we were doing professional interviews, but we're not, we're not uh, after news or the scoop, you know, we're, we're trying to just create I just want to talk connections. About the movie. Well, maybe that makes us professional interviews. I don't know. Like I want to talk about the movie. I want to connect with them as people. I want to get to know them. And so 10 minutes is hard to do so ten, that. 10 minutes is hard. So maybe for the people who are more cut and dry, like, you know, asking the, like, and it's, I also don't want to be the person who's asking the same questions. Right. Like you have to throw in one or two of those. Um, that, but the hard part is in a move in an interview like this is you have to get a couple of those groundwork questions in like, you know, I do yes. want to know how do you came up with the film and the concept of the film? How did that come to be? And really then there's no, runway to get into some of the you know other questions that you might want to about well, see, but we, we walk, I, I don't know did you walk in uh when the publicist and anna and jillian were all talking about hair did you catch the like the tail end of it they're like I oh did. you're here we i were, did we we're just talking about i want to talk about hair i do want to talk about hair too yeah that's my hair's some... like completely gray yeah. at the top i i did like a sweep with my hair but i don't think they that's saw the it thing. it's like i just want to have small talk with these folks that's like, all i want to talk about is hair yeah so we need more than 10 minutes and hopefully we build up a good reputation. Maybe, maybe. maybe. I doubt it. Yeah. But I really enjoyed talking with these four. I think I wanted to make sure that most importantly that Sasha knew and that the team knew how important this movie was across the board 
and I probably maybe said it three or four times. So yeah. it also <laughs> sounds like I what I heard was Steve's coming over to our house to visit for cake. Yeah, I don't know about the cake part, but I'll make cake. He's if he looking comes. at he's looking for some cabins. We're gonna have to we'll have to set him up with. Uh, he can sleep over here on his way to you know exploring. I couldn't work in the fainting goat thing. I know. I wanted yeah. so badly to I'm ask really, him about I'm his fainting really goats. I'm really thrilled that you did not. Gosh. discuss that. <laughs> but Google it later. He for sure does have a goat farm. But neither here nor there. Loved this movie. Loved talking to these folks. We hope you enjoyed the interview too. And. Go check out Cowboys. Go check it out. Out this week. It's available this Friday. That's February 12th. 12th. 